Okay guys, welcome back. And in this video, we're gonna be doing every exam question that has been asked on linear graphs. And this is gonna be in two parts because actually there's quite a lot of questions here. Now, like I always say, this document can be downloaded from the link in the description. It's fully hyperlinked, so it'll take you to all of the different questions. So in this video, I'm gonna start off by doing the drawing graphs, gradient and equations of lines. And in the next video, I'm gonna be looking at these questions over here, which is parallel perpendicular regions and then one random kind of question at the end. So we'll get started with this first question, which is about drawing graphs. And it is on a calculator paper. And it says here, on the grid below, draw the graph of y equals two x minus three from uh, minus two to four. Now, there's loads of different ways of doing this. You could do that the um, intercept is gonna be minus three and the gradient is two, or you could do a table of values. I think I'm probably gonna do a table of values just because it makes the most sense to me. Now, I'm gonna do uh, just a few points. I'm not gonna do all of them because they want it to go from minus two to four. I'm definitely gonna do a minus two and I'm gonna do a four. And I'm also gonna do a zero just because that's somewhere in between and should be a nice easy one to work out. So if I'm saying that x is minus two, that is two times minus two, which is minus four, take away three is minus seven. And of course, you could just work this out on your calculator by literally just doing uh, two times minus two minus three, and you get the answer minus seven. Now, when x is zero, it's just gonna be two times zero, take away three, which is minus three. And then for four, we're gonna do two times four minus three, so that's eight minus three, which is five. So plotting these coordinates, minus two is gonna go down here with minus seven, zero is gonna go with minus three, and four is gonna go with five. Now, of course, you could do this longer if you wanted to, you could do all of the table of values, but I'm just gonna do those ones, and I've got my straight line drawn from minus two to four. Now, the mark scheme's not that clear to read, but you can see we've got a table of values here, and we've got, you just get all three marks if the line is drawn correctly. Okay, this one is about gradient. It says that A is the point with coordinate five, nine, and B is the point with coordinates D, 15. The gradient of the line AB is three, work out the value of D. Now, some of you might just think, okay, this is a pretty easy way of doing this because I know that the gradient is the rise over the run. So I'm gonna do the kind of intuitive one and then I'll do the algebraic one afterwards. Well, the amount that it's rising by is six. So if it's rising by six and the gradient is three, we're saying, well, how much does it have to run along by? Well, it has to run along by two because six divided by two is three, which means that to go from five to D, it's got to go along two spaces. So D is going to be equal to seven. But what I'm gonna do is kind of sort of like a non-intuitive way, I'll do like the algebraic way. Now we know that the gradient is the change in y, which sometimes people write as y2 minus y1, divided by the change in x, which is x2 minus x1. Now, in this case, we know that the gradient is three, the second y coordinate is 15, and the first y coordinate is nine. The second x coordinate is d, and the first x coordinate is five. So three equals six over d minus five, which looks very similar to what we were talking about in this kind of scenario. And so taking this working out over here, I'm gonna swap these two parts over because you're allowed to do that. That's multiplying up by D minus five and dividing by three. So D minus five equals six divided by three. D minus five is equal to two. And so D is equal to seven. So that's kind of my intuitive approach that's at the top that kind of is not particularly clear what's going on. And then this is the algebraic kind of approach that you might have. So we do come up with the answer that D is equal to seven. Okay, it now just says very simply, L is shown on the grid, find an equation for L. Well, we know that Y equals MX plus C. So we just need to figure out what the gradient is. Let's just take these two points here. We can see as we go one across, we go three up. So very clearly for that part, that tells us that the gradient is three divided by one, which is just three, it's the rise divided by the run. So we already know that it's gonna be y equals three x. And then we just need the intercept and the y intercept is minus six. So it's gonna be y equals three x minus six. Yep, there it is, correct answer. Now, sometimes people just say three x minus six, you do need to make sure you've got that y equals at the beginning there, okay? Here we go with another one. We are now gonna be looking at equations of lines and then intersections. So it says the straight line L1 passes through the points with these two coordinates, and the straight line passes L2 passes through the origin and has gradient minus three. So 
we're going to then find out the equation of L1 and L2, and then we're going to deal with this information, that they intersect at the point P. So let's actually deal with L2 to begin with. Because it passes through the origin, that means that the y-intercept is going to be equal to 0, and the gradient is minus 3. So if it was y equals mx plus c, it's going to be y equals m, which is minus 3, mx, plus c, which is plus 0, but I'm not going to bother writing anything for that because plus 0 doesn't change anything at all. Now we'll have a look at m1. Because we know that that standard equation of a line is y equals mx plus c, we're going to begin by finding out what the gradient is using these two coordinates that we've got here and here. So I'm going to do the change in y. I'm going to do the 2 minus the 6. 2 minus 6, and I'll do that divided by the change in x, which is the 12 minus the 4. 12 minus 4. So 2 minus 6, that's minus 4, and 12 minus 4 is 8, so that is minus a half. Now what I'm going to do is find out what c is equal to. So I know from one of these coordinates, and it doesn't matter which one that you use, I know that if I've got 4 and 6, x is equal to 4, and y is equal to 6. So that's where I've got this information here. And I know that my line is y equals mx plus c. So y minus a half x plus c. And I'm going to substitute those in place here and here. So y is 6, x is 4. And we'll figure out what c is. Now I'm going to just shrink all of this down so I've got a little bit more space. So 6 equals a half of 4 is 2, so that's minus 2 plus c. And then to find out what c is, I'm going to add the 2 to the other side. So c is equal to 8, meaning my equation is y equals minus a half x plus 8. So we've now got these two equations. We've got this equation here for L1, sorry, L2, and this equation here for L1. And it just says that they intersect. So intersect means find out where these two equations are equal to each other. When do they have the same x and y coordinate? Well, because y is equal to this and y is equal to this, I can just make them equal to each other. So minus 3x is equal to minus a half x plus 8. Loads and loads of different ways of solving this. Some people like to double everything to get rid of the fractions. So I might do that. So I get minus 6x equals minus x plus 16. I'm going to add the x to the other side so that I get minus 5x equals 16. And so x is equal to 16 divided by minus 5, which is minus 3.2. We're happy to give this as a decimal. And then we're just going to find out what the y coordinate is. Well, you can either use this one or this one. So y is going to be equal to, I'm going to use the second equation that we have here. So I'm going to use that in this part. y is equal to 3 multiplied by x. So it's 3, uh, sorry, minus 3 times minus 3.2. Well, it's going to be a positive, And so it's going to be 9.6, which means the co which means, sorry, not meanings, that the coordinate of p is our x coordinate followed by our y coordinate that we've got here. So it should be minus 3.2 and 9.6. Now they've written it like this. Well, let's just double check that that's the same. They said that minus 3.2 is minus 16 over 5. Let's check out 48 over 5. That is 9.6. So it is the same answer that we've got here. And it does say OE, which means equivalents are accepted or equivalent, OE. And there's our answer. OK, so we're now moving on to parallel lines, which is what I'm going to do in a separate video. Um, but that's the first part about uh, straight line graphs. So come back for the second video for the second part of linear graphs.